name is Christina Garcia. Well, no. And I did my research on the cloning and expression of the interphotoreceptor retinoid binding protein. And I did my research at um, the VA under the supervision of Dr. Federico Gonzalez. I'll just be giving you guys a um, brief overview over the eye and the visual cycle <laughs> and information on IRVP and its role in the visual cycle and its possible role in the autosomal recessive retinitis pigmentosa disorder. Um, I'll be highlighting the importance of cloning IRVP and different applications of this study. On the screen, you can see a very simplified version of the anatomy of the eye. There are many parts of the eye, but the retina is the part of the eye that captures the image because it has the rods and the cones, and so it will be focused on during this presentation. The retina has 10 layers. Most importantly, pay attention to the RPE, or the retinal pigmented epithelium, which is where the, codes, the cones and the rods are located, which is where photo capture occurs. IRBP is found in the subretinal space of the RPE, and it's the most soluble protein, and it helps transport retinoids from different cells in which the visual cycle is occurring. Um, light must basically travel in through all these layers, and so it seems as though the anatomy of the eye is backwards because the photons need to travel through all nine layers prior to actually reaching its site of action. Basic part of, um, basic key point in the visual cycle is the isomeric conformational change that occurs in the retina um, between all cis to all trans retinoids. The first step of the visual cycle is when the photons enter the eye and they will hit the rods and the cones and activate rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is um, a protein which is composed of opsin and retinal. The two main components of retinal that we are looking at are all cis and all trans retinal. Basically the all cis retinal absorbs the light, kick, kicks off a cascade that will transform or isomerically conform all of the all cis retinal into all trans retinal. And in order to see the next image, you need to reset the cycle. IRVP's importance comes in because the visual cycle occurs in all different types of cells in the retina and because cell membranes are hydrophobic, they don't allow the retinoids to um, be transported in without the utilization of a carrier protein, IRVP. This is the crystal structure of IRVP in the Xenophis, or the frog, and it is thought to be analogous to that of the human IRVP. It's very difficult to uh, um, obtain IRVP specimen, um, mostly because you would need post-mortem specimen. It's very hard for people to want to donate their eyes to research. Um, autosomal retinal, retinitis pigmentosa is found to be the first pathogenic form of IRVP mutation. Um, before this, IRVP had been knocked out in mice and no pathogenic result had arise. But in 2009, an Italian family was shown to have a correlation between a gene mutation in the IRBP, specifically an aspartic acid um, becoming an asparagine, and it shows to affect the retinal, the um, visual cycle. Retinitis pigmentosa, or RP, is specifically starts with um, tunnel vision and then will lead to, um, will lead to legal blindness. And it shows that IRVP could possibly be extremely important in the visual cycle. Um, in order to st further study IRVP and its importance in the visual cycle, IRVP, human IRVP recombinant specimens are necessary, and so the cloning of these specimens is quite important, and that's what my research is focused on. As you can see here, this is a construct of a plasmid which is inserted into bacteria and allowed to replicate. The insert is then taken out and placed into another vector, which is placed into another bacteria plasmid and allowed to replicate. This is a restriction enzyme map um, in, which all, in which the IRVP is placed in. This is a gel electrophoresis, and basically after placing these 
this insert in the plasma that's cut in the digest. And as you can see on your right, the band is extracted and separated via gel electrophoresis. This is very important to future research, mostly because you don't need post-mortem slices any, any longer because you're able to form a renewable resource of human recombinant IRPP. Also, labs can perform further studies on, um, in order to see the interaction of the IRBP and the cell surface and further understand the structure and function of IRBP, both in the visual cycle and its possible importance in RP. So my references. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Federico Gonzalez and Alex Sunshine, which helped me directly with this PowerPoint, um, Mary Alice Garland, and Priscilla Gonzalez for dancing. Any questions? <laughs> okay. Oh, so we have a question. No? Yes? We have no? A question. Okay. Yeah. So, how did you, you said you cloned the eye? Yeah. Oh, uh, how did you? How did I clone it? I insert it into a plasmid and then you take that insert out and then you insert it into another plasmid and then you put it into the bacteria and the bacteria uses its own ribosomes to amplify it and make multiple copies of it. Yeah, IRBP is also, like, it's already, um, the weight is already known. Uh -huh. So when you run the gel and the fragments separate, you can use a ladder in order to match it up by weight, yeah. and that's how you distinguish. Excuse me? Do you have the two where it's located? Um, the weight? I believe it's 13 kilograms. Matthew? How long did this hold on process? If it's done correctly, it would take one day, but sometimes the plasma doesn't work. At first there was a lot of, um, like you had to use the right restriction enzyme because the insert can insert the forward way and the backward way. So it's a lot of trial and error before you can actually find the exact restriction enzymes necessary so that the band is cut at a, at a because at first you, we were cutting the band and they were all coming out equal. So if it's separated by weight, you're going to have the same one band. But we wanted three different bands, so you needed the right restriction enzymes to cut it in different places, to show different weights, and then to be able to easily separate it out. Are your mentors considered pioneers in this area? Um, I don't think anyone had ever tried to... C cloning is something that's used often. Like, this is a, you know, a, a normal methodology, but the human IRBP gene hadn't been cloned before. And so this is extremely useful because there wasn't this renewable resource. It was almost a hassle to have to get eyes um, to be able, like, to obtain eyes. Because a lot of people don't want to donate those. So very important. Any other questions? Thanks for your time.